Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are watching me for the first time, my name is Sahil Agarwal. I've just completed my BTEC from IIT Gandhinagar in the discipline of Computer Science and Engineering. On this channel, I make videos related to DSA preparation, interview uh, preparation. I share my learnings and experiences with you all so that you get benefited from it. As I am an IITian, I also plan to make videos related to an IITian's life. It will definitely intrigue you because the kind of life which an IITian lives is not exactly same as portrayed in the outside world. I will try to share some insightful information on an IITian's life which is untold and hidden from the outside world. You can also follow me on Instagram and LinkedIn. I regularly share updates and share some insightful information based on DSA preparation, interview preparation, software engineering, software jobs and many more. This video is going to be very very important for all those who are preparing DS and are solving questions on platforms like Lead Code, Geeks for Geeks, Interviewbit, etc. I personally believe that if a right kind of guidance is given to a person when they're preparing for DSA, he or she can get ahead easily. In this video, I will tell you how many number of easy questions, how many number of medium questions and how many number of difficult questions you should be solving to master DSA. What should be the exact ratio of easy is to medium is to hard questions? I will tell you in this video. This may sound like a small topic, but trust me, this is a very, very important thing to understand when you are preparing DSA. If the ratio of the problems you are solving is not according to what I'm going to tell in this video, you're going in the wrong direction. I've seen many lead code profiles where students have solved more than 400 lead code questions, more than 500 lead code questions. But on a given day, if I ask them a lead code medium problem, they will not be able to answer. Why? Because they've only solved easy number of questions. They haven't solved enough amount of medium and hard level problems. They have never come out of their comfort zone. They have solved immense number of easy questions thinking that they are able to solve these many number of questions questions so they are doing well they are understanding the DSA concept but that is not the case as always this video will be concise and to the point if you like the video do subscribe to my channel share it with all your friends who are preparing DSA and you can comment down any queries any suggestions which you may have for me I will definitely try to reply you so sorry to interrupt you guys but apart from DSA some core CAC subjects are also very important when it comes to coding interviews one such subject is object oriented programming which is very very important and many questions are asked in the coding interviews. That is why I have come up with my own OOPS course in the language C++. The link is in the description. You can check it out. Already 31 students have enrolled in the course and are enjoying the content. You can also be the next one if you want to learn every OOP concept in detail and strengthen your OOPS knowledge. Go check out the link in the description and do enroll if you like the content. Let's get back to the video. So let's say you are starting to learn a new DSA topic. Let's consider graphs. So when you are learning graphs, first you should understand the theory the concepts the underlying concept and all the basics okay now when you have completed all this it's time to solve questions so when you are starting to solve questions pick 10 easy questions and solve them okay so when you have solved 10 easy questions you will feel like okay now i am able to solve these easy questions easily so when that is the case, that's the time for you to move on to the medium level questions. So now when you move on to the medium level questions, I would suggest that solve 22 medium level questions. So why this number? I will tell you afterwards. So now when you have solved around 22 medium level questions, you will feel like, okay, I'm able to solve 70 to 80% of the medium level questions. And when you feel this, then it's time for you to move on to hard questions. So when you move on to the hard questions, I would say solve around eight hard questions. So so this brings the total count to 40. So now if you observe out of these 40 graph problems, you have solved 10 easy questions, which accounts to 25% of the total number. You have solved 22 medium problems, which accounts to 55% of the total number. And you have solved eight hard problems, which accounts to 20% of the total number. So if you see, you have only solved 25% easy questions, rest 75% is a combination of medium plus hard. Understand that this is just an example, which I have given to you to explain you how you should be solving questions what should be the approximate ratio of easy is to medium is to hard questions i personally have solved more than 550 problems on lead code and geeks for geeks and for me the ratio was uh, similar to this 
it helped me a lot and trust me it will help you a lot as well if you will just solve easy questions that won't help you that won't help you develop your logic building and problem solving ability that will just increase the question count on lead code but it won't help you crack coding rounds and in interviews so it is very important that when you get comfortable with the easy level of questions you move on to the medium level of questions and solve uh, a lot of medium level questions so let's say when you have solved around 30 medium level problems there won't be a case that you will be able to solve all those 30 medium level questions on your own. Maximum you will be able to solve around 20 to 25 medium level questions on your own. Uh, for the remaining questions you will have to look upon hints and tutorials but you cannot just stick to medium level questions. You will have to move on to the hard level of questions after this position. You will have to get out of your comfort zone in order to improve, in order to build your logic building and problem solving skills. This is also one major factor in order to build your logic building that just increase the level of questions gradually because the moment you start increasing the level of questions, the harder you force your brain to think logically, right? So that improves your logic building and problem solving ability. When I tell that you will not be able to solve all the medium level questions on your own, that is fine. Don't get disheartened when this happens. This is a common thing. This happens with everyone. This happened with me. This happened with all of my friends. This happens with everyone. This is a very common thing. So don't get demotivated and disheartened by seeing that I'm not able to solve all the questions on my own. That won't be the case anytime. Don't be in this illusion that I will switch to hard level problems only when I'm able to solve all the medium level problems on my own. That won't be the case anytime. And when you will switch to hard level problems, you will feel even more disheartened, even more de demotivated because initially you will, you will not be able to solve any hard question because they, those are difficult questions. Uh, slowly and gradually when you practice more, maybe you will be able to solve 40 to 50 percent of the hard level questions, not more than that, given the amount of preparation students put in uh, for DSA uh, in engineering colleges. So why have I come up with this ratio of easy is to medium is to hard problems and why this ratio like 25 is to 55 is to 20? I personally believe that and it is a fact that most of the questions in coding rounds and interviews are in the range of medium to hard. So it is very important for you to solve maximum number of medium to hard problems. If you will solve many uh, hard problems, like if the ratio of hard problems is 50%, you will feel demotivated, you will feel disheartened and you will not continue your coding journey. So the ratio of hard problems should be less, the ratio of medium problems should be maximum and the ratio of easy problems again should be less because uh, there is no point in solving more easy problems because uh, those problems are not going to come in coding rounds and interviews. Uh, the easy problems are there just to make your base and once your base is set, you should move on to the medium level problems and then further to the hard level problems. If you will follow this, the progress will be slow, but it will be worth it. And I think it is a very important topic which nobody talks about uh, in DSA. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching the video and learned something new. Uh, do subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with all your friends and keep supporting. I will meet you in the next one. Till then, keep learning, keep growing and stay healthy.